Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Helen Liao. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in today's headlines, city volunteers in the Philippines are holding a rice distribution for 20,000 needy families. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of Tsuji Teachers Association and Tsuji's members and Tsuji's return to Hualien to put on a musical performance. And also in Taiwan's in Pindong's Manzhou Township, Tsuji volunteers are visiting a senior residence whose house was damaged by the rain in June. We start today's show in the Philippines where Tsuji volunteers are carrying out a rice distribution in the Rizzo province. The 20 kilo bag of rice will help 20,000 needy families through their times of need and to reciprocate Tsuji's love, the governor promised to invite residents to join Tsuji's recycling program. On this rainy day, Tsuji volunteers are driving on bumpy roads for two hours to distribute rice vouchers door to door. Kaisaka, Philippines, the 75-year-old district head also needs a rice voucher. He usually stays at the office instead of going home as he has no money to repair his house. In a settlement area of Cardona Township, residents were relocated here from flood-prone areas during the typhoon season. Among the residents is Nicholas, who takes the rice voucher to save money for his children's tuition fees. The 20 kilo sack of rice is really helpful. We usually consume one kilo a day, so we can save the money and use it as well. The governor of Rizzo recognizes these missions. Thus, 14 townships signed an environmental protection agreement to join Tsuji in recycling work. The rice distribution has helped residents in times of need. To reciprocate Tsuji's love, the governor of Rizzo will call on the public to join Tsuji's recycling campaign in the future. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Tsuji Collegiate Youth Association, also known as Tsuqing's, in Taiwan, Hualien Tsuqing started a worldwide recycling day. We have previously brought you the events from Japan, England, and the United States. Now we join the event held in Indonesia, where Tsuqing's from different cities took to the streets to clean up and promote recycling. Drawing and coloring trees on cardboard. And wearing them as a sandwich board. Jakarta Tsuchings are doing a streetwide cleanup. In Indonesia, we have seven chapters of Tsuchings participating in the Marathon Recycling Day. Our Jakarta Tsuchings started early in the morning from Tinkaranjai village. Besides spreading conservation ideals to residents, we are also sweeping the streets. Besides the streetwide cleanup, Tsuchings are knocking on every door to inform Jakarta residents what's the best way to practice recycling in their homes. I do not know how to treasure our resources, but since I have joined Tsuqing, I have learned that if I don't protect the planet, how will I get others to participate as well? Not only are Jakarta Tsuqing's participating in this marathon of recycling, but Tsuqing's from Tangerang, Singkawang, and Batam are also participating in the worldwide event. I think this kind of activity is good for young people. This type of street-wide promotion reminds us that we should take notice and clean our environment. At the recycling stations, I have learned that papers are recyclable too. Plastic bottles can be recycled into clothes. Many of the items we throw away can actually be recycled. Using love to protect the earth, Indonesia's Tsuchings are setting an example of how to be the earth's best friend. To 
celebrate the 20th anniversary of Ciji Teachers Association and Ciqing's teachers and students from eight different countries took to the stage to perform the Water Repentance Sutra. Through video clips, many also share their stories in hopes of encouraging more people to devote themselves to become role models for our society. Let's take a look. To mark the celebration of the 20th anniversary of Ciji Teachers Association and Ciqing's, many teachers and students took to the stage to perform the musical adaptation of the Water Repentance Sutra. When he was younger, Liang was sent by his schizophrenic mother to purchase rat poison that later led to her death. With his father blaming him for the accident, he decided to give up on life. Luckily, he met his teacher Zhang Jingkun, and his life was completely turned around. I see the changes in him from being a rebellious youth to a jewel master. I feel very proud of him. It is better than winning any teaching award from the Ministry of Education. Liang Mingyi, who is a drill master, passes on the love he received from his teacher and guides rebellious youth back on the right track. During the event, Ciqing alumnus also took to the stage to encourage the Ciqings to carry on the work. Don't worry about the responsibility that you carry. All of you should have the courage to carry them and move on. Other than managing her busy student life, Zheng Yuzhuan, who is a Ciqing, also volunteers to take care of her two cerebral palsy schoolmates. She cares for them just like their mothers. Throughout our journey in life, there will be times of struggle, and Yuzhuan is my best friend through this journey. It's been so good to have you as a friend. Nearly 2,000 educational members from eight different countries arrived in Jingsi Hall to be part of the performance of the Water Repentance Sutra. They hope to take the Dharma into their hearts and become good role models for society. <laughs> For the past 20 years, members of Ciji Teachers Association have been spreading the imprint of love all around the world as they promise to continue their good work and carry on Ciji's mission. Next, we meet Liang Mingyi, an instructor at his school who lost his mother to an overdose at 10. Liang and his older brother not only started smoking, but also involved themselves in gang fights. Luckily, Liang met his middle school teacher Zhang Jingkun and came to a turning point in life. That night, my high school teacher was sleeping right next to me. In 2010, Liang Mingyi was reunited with his middle school teacher Zhang Jingkun at one of Ciji's seminars. The meeting brought back memories from some 30 years ago. The way my teacher told us really inspired me. I think that the power of goodness inspired me to willingly make a decision, the decision to walk the path that I want to walk. Liang came from a broken family, his mother died young of an overdose, his father was an alcoholic, and his siblings became drug addicts as well. My elder brother made the wrong choice in life. Back home, he would be sniffing super glue. In that environment, we were all influenced, so when we went to school, we became really violent towards our classmates. 
Thanks to his teacher from junior high school, Liang was inspired to enroll in a military academy and eventually got married and had his own family. However, his brother was not so lucky. In the year of 2000, Typhoon Xiangsen devastated Taiwan and city volunteers were immediately mobilized to carry out relief work. Moved by the devotion of these caregivers, Liang decided to join Ciji and in the process found his spiritual harbor. Some sisters suggested that I inspired my brother through Buddhism. While he was serving his term, he read a lot of Buddhist sutras and the Jin Si aphorisms. After he was released, he was more determined to change. So far, he has worked and received four months worth of pay. Knowing the pain and harm drugs bring to families, Liang Mingyi decided to share his knowledge with other educators. We gather all the teachers and pass on to them the right information about drugs. We also give each class the video clip of the life story of Huang Ruifang so that they may play it for the student and give a small talk after the video. Basically, we try to get this information out and reach as many students as we can. Over the past two years, Liang Mingyi has spoken at nearly 40 seminars, sharing with his audience his life story in hopes of inspiring young people to do good and the teachers to lead their students on the right path in life. Whether it is an educator or not, or simply just our friends or family, when you carry that good thought with you and give a little of your love to someone, at the end, it might have a profound impact on that person. Both the Ciji Teachers Association and Ciji Collegiate Youth Association were established 20 years ago. In the beginning, the two associations would hold individual conferences to share their Ciji experiences, which was not efficient in terms of human resources or information sharing. This year, under Master Zheng Yin's guidance, the Global Annual Educational Conference was held in Hualien. The 2012 Global Annual Educational Conference was held in Hualien, Taiwan. The main purpose of the conference is to help the Ciji Teachers Association, Ciji Parenting Association, and Cixing's to learn from each other and to grow as one unit. We can use this large-scale conference to unite everyone. As everyone knows, teachers and students are a perfect match. Students bring a sense of energy, while teachers bring a sense of maturity to the conference. It couldn't be more perfect. In the beginning, the Ciji Teachers Association and Cixing's held separate conferences. Master Zheng Yan believes that these two educational conferences should merge into one to achieve the greatest impact. Cixing's and the Teachers Association both belong to the education field, so they shouldn't have too many individual meetings. By working together, they can both save time to help more people. At the conference, learning to perform the Water Repentance Sutra was an opportunity to self-evaluate themselves as teachers. Being a good teacher is difficult to learn without actual experience. Through participating in the Water Repentance Sutra, teachers have an opportunity to remember what being a student feels like and what the differences are between teaching and learning. Ciji's educational associations are not only about building kindergartens or universities, but also helping spread Ciji's humanistic values. The Ciji Teachers Association was founded in 1992 to promote the wisdom of Master Zhen Yan in schools. Over the past 20 years, the association has grown to 3,500 members with branches in different countries. Thanks to Master Zhen Yan and Jing Si aphorisms, these teachers are able to bring the spirits of Ciji into children's hearts and minds. On today, June 9, 2012, the Hong Kong branch of the Ciji Teachers Association has been born. The Ciji Teachers Association was founded in Taiwan in 1992. Twenty years later, the Hong Kong branch of the association was founded in June, setting another milestone. 
important. The Master taught us to love completely and teach to our utmost. We don't do it out of responsibility. It is with love that we teach. There is no such thing as an unteachable child. All that is required is to work together to build an environment conducive to education. With this goal in mind, in 1995, the teachers worked to bring Jin's aphorisms to schools overseas. That same year in September, the association's first overseas branch was born in Malacca, Malaysia. Every sentence in the aphorisms has a correct or positive influence. So who would have a problem with them? In fact, as we teachers teach them, we have noticed positive changes occurring in ourselves. This is a perfect example of their influence. The aphorisms also have some Buddhist teachings in them. However, we will select those that are more applicable to daily life. For example, include me when doing good deeds, exclude me when doing evil deeds, these teachings have a great influence on the children. Also, when other teachers or school authorities hear aphorisms, they won't feel like they are propagating a certain religious agenda. Growing up with Jinsi aphorisms, changes can be seen in the children as they learn and grow. These changes will also go on to influence their immediate family. One teacher can influence 50 children, and since modern-day parents listen to their children, these children can in turn influence their family members. So if one child has two parents, that means 100 parents are being influenced. If you take the 2,000 children in the school, that means 4,000 parents, an entire community, are coming in contact with these teachings. We hope that the study of aphorisms will not simply be restricted to the classroom. The question is how do we bring these teachings into society? After bringing them to our schools, we hope these teachings can become even more widespread. Since the government of Malaysia requires teachers to undergo additional training several times a year, the local Ziji Teachers Association took advantage of those training sessions to introduce Jin's aphorism to non-Chinese teachers. In over 20 years, Ziji has found acceptance in society. Within society, we don't take the form of missionaries. What we do is like education. As we find acceptance, people no longer are worried of differences in religion in our workshops. So in our teachers' training, we even have Malay teachers joining us. I hope that this method can bring Jinx aphorisms into every school and have every teacher using them and promoting them. I believe that this is the ultimate goal. We want to ensure that the teaching of these aphorisms can be found everywhere. At present, there are branches of the Ziji Teachers Association in Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and even the United States, in which over 300 teachers are promoting the use of the Jinsi aphorisms at Ziji academies. Every summer break, teachers from Ziji Teachers Association will also travel to schools in China for cultural exchange. If I see the students are not doing something right, I will get flustered and nervous. But through the study of Jinsi aphorisms, I can now attend to these problems with a calm mind and understand how to truly teach materials and educate people. True love has no boundaries, and through Jinsi aphorisms, teachers everywhere are using love and the wisdom to bring Ziji's humanitarian values to even more people and institutions.
In Manzhou Township of Pingzhong County, Mr. Zhang's house was severely damaged after heavy rainfall in June. The senior lives with his mentally challenged son, and the two have no means to repair their house when moving to another location. After hearing of their situation, city volunteers arrive on the scene for a quick survey and hope to return soon to provide further assistance. Arriving at Mr. Jiang's house in Manzhong Township in Pingzhong County, one sees many large cracks not only in front of the house but also in the walls. It looks like as a knife has cut through the building. The crack on this wall is so big the sunlight can shine through. <laughs> Seventy-year-old Mr. Jiang lives with his mentally challenged son and makes a living by selling fruit. After a heavy rainfall in June, Mr. Jiang received twenty thousand NT dollars from the Manzhou Township office to move. However, the father and son don't know where to go. They don't have a place to go, so we hope someone can come and help them through this difficult time. Since this 40-year-old house cannot withstand any further damage, city volunteers have arrived on scene and hope to provide Mr. Jiang with further assistance so he doesn't have to wait in despair. Tsuji Kindergarten in Butterworth, Malaysia recently held a charity fair to raise funds for the construction of both dialysis and education centers to help those in need. During the fair, kindergartners promote sale items to fair goers. Moved by their children's efforts, parents showed their support with concrete action. Children are carrying posters and bamboo banks to promote glutinous rice dumplings and mashed potatoes in order to help Tsuji Malaysia chapter build dialysis and uh, education centers. The Tsuji Kindergarten in Butworth is holding a small charity fair to raise money. Seeing the children's devotion, parents are touched and also take action to show their support. I think my child is great because he can make these glutinous rice dumplings by himself. I told him that mommy will support him. When I'm here, I'm very moved to see children learning about teamwork. To help parents realize the purpose of the fundraising, teachers explain the plan of education center. Parents are especially touched when listening to the stories of personnel and dialysis patients from Tsuji's dialysis center in Butterworth. Uh, after looking through the video clips on the, ki the dialysis center, I feel very touched. Huh? In fact, I cried because um, my father himself is a dialysis patient. The success of the fair demonstrates the children's devotion who fully participated in the event from preparing ingredients to cooking. The charity fair also gave the children an opportunity to use what they've learned in class. At the end of the show, we go to the city of Burnaby in Canada to join Tsuji volunteers in a multicultural festival. During the event, Tsuji volunteers share with the participants how plastic bottles can actually be turned into blankets and clothes. Apart from the workshop, volunteers also put on a fashion show with eco-friendly clothing. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Die Headlines. Goodbye.